so good morning, everyone. Uh, as Wojciech said, I work at the National Lib Library of France, which I will call BNF in the course of my presentation. That's the French uh, acronym. Uh, and I am head of the French National Bibliography's uh, book section. And at, uh, at IFLA, the International uh, Federation of Library Associations and Institutions, I'm the chair of the bibliography section. I don't want to take credit for the cataloging se section, which is a different uh, unit in IFLA, uh, even though, of course, we work closely together. Um, so my topic today is a national library, the National Library's perspectives on open bibliographic metadata, which I will be looking at mostly through the prism of my own library. So um, library met metadata uh, and open data. Can we talk about open library metadata? Uh, I think we're all familiar with the concept of open access for research data. IFLA is a proponent and advocate. In its 2011 statement, which was recently updated, IFLA writes, open access is the now known name for a concept, a movement, and a business model whose goal is to provide free access and reuse of scientific knowledge in the form of research articles, monographs, data, and related materials. Open access does this by shifting today's prevalent business models of after publication payment by, subs by subscribers to a funding model that does not charge readers or their institutions for access. Thus, open access is an essential issue within IFLA's information agenda. Uh, but our object today for this presentation is slightly different because we're talking not about research data in general, but about library metadata. So roughly speaking, the data you find in library, uh, library catalogs. Um, um, so yeah, uh, metadata is commonly defined as data about data, the information that is held in library records, describing and giving access to library collections. Those records can be, are both bibliographic, describing the document or resources, because we all speak uh, FRBR and LRM here, um, and uh, authority records that describe the entities that control and give access to these resources. So this is mostly uh, descriptive and factual information, not original creative works. And here you see the difference with research data and the implication it can have for copyright. Um, giving access to this data is of course essential to the mission of libraries because they condition access to the resources themselves. As part of the push to make data open, several organizations provide uh, licensed text whose purpose is to make clear uh, to users exactly what they are allowed to do with this data in terms of sharing, reusing, and modification. Uh, these licenses provide a clear statement of what is allowed, regardless of what copyright or other intellectual property laws are applicable, uh, which of course is particularly valuable in a globalized online environment. So where such laws exist, uh, the licenses make the terms of use more easily accessible and understandable. And where they don't, uh, they also make reuse easier by providing a consensual framework. There are different types of licenses, but for our purpose today, we will consider two broad categories, public domain uh, type licenses, such as CC0, and uh, attribution licenses such as CC BY, both provided by Creative Commons. Um, a note that CC licenses are centered on copyright and not appropriate for databases, except for CC0. Uh, ODC BY, by the Open Knowledge F Foundation, covers both databases and their data. It's an important distinction because uh, data and databases laws are not harmonized worldwide. So European and Russian laws, for instance, uh, grant protection specifically to databases, databases even non-creative ones, uh, such as our library catalogs. But most other countries, such as the US or Canada, for instance, do not. I want to focus a bit on the uh, situation in Europe. Uh, the European Union has adopted a framework for open data in the 2010s, 
The European Commission's licensing recommendations to support the reuse of public sector information <laughs> from PSI uh, encourage member states to adopt standardized open licenses. I quote, open standard licenses, for example, the most recent Creative Commons CC licenses, version 0.40, should allow the reuse of PSI without the need to develop and update custom-made licenses at national or subnational level. Of these, the CC0 public domain dedication is of particular interest. As a legal tool that allows waiving copyright and database, database rights on PSI, it ensures full flexibility for reusers and reduces the complications associated with handling numerous licenses with possibly conflicting provisions. Consistent with these recommendations, several countries in the EU have created their own licenses for government data, such as the Open Government Licenses, License OGL in the UK and Etalab in France. Both of them fall under the second category of licenses I was referring to, as they do require attribution, which is a problem uh, with, for library metadata, because library metadata, as you know, is, public, is produced in many successive stages. It's very common for libraries to uh, get some uh, metadata from the publishers, for instance. Uh, this metadata was created under different standards than those of libraries, so we use it, but we transform it. Uh, it's useful information, and if we can get it in digital form, we can use some of it directly in our records, but um, I would say library records are not publishers' metadata. We keep the strings of letters basically where relevant, but the information they represent is structured, added to, organized in quite different ways. Still, it's very important to be able to share data in that way. Uh, we create relevant authority data or link to it and so on. Then other users, uh, including the publishers, uh, but other libraries, library system providers and so on, retrieve the metadata and also reorganize it and add to it and so on. For instance, a local library will add its shelf marks, uh, its librarians' reviews and recommendations, a specialized library will add its specialist classification schemes and so on. So metadata, library metadata production, I would say, is a continuum, and every actor may use only part of the original record, combine it with parts of other records and so on, which makes attribution technically and intellectually difficult. That's why many institutions uh, are in favor of CC0 licenses. Uh, for national library metadata and data produced by most libraries in Europe, I think there is a strong argument that this is public information uh, created by publicly funded agencies and should fully be part of the public domain without restrictions to access, reuse and sharing. Instead of resorting to attribution licenses, these institutions usually recommend requesting that the source be mentioned. This model of using CC0 licenses and requesting attributions instead of using CC BY licenses that require it uh, makes a crucial difference because it ensures that users won't get entangled in the technical and intellectual problems attribution poses when dealing with data that is compiled, reused, published simultaneously on different platforms and so on. Uh, the complexity of library metadata attribution is currently exemplified in the lawsuit between OCLC and Clarivate, which I'm not going to go into as I'm not a, a, a specialist, but uh, I'm providing a couple of links in the bibliography if you're interested in the topic. So for the last part of my presentation, I want to focus on the kind of services you can expect from National Library. Uh, I will highlight the French National Library's current services as representative of the type of services most major institutions can offer. In France, as I said, the opening of public data is part of a national policy derived from the European dir Directive I cited earlier. The BNF made its metadata available under the Etalab license in 2014. But to further illustrate the complexity of having different attribution models on the platform, 
I will mention that the VNF participates in VF and Europeana, both of whom have adopted a CC0 license. So uh, currently the VNF offers four major um, sources on, of metadata or services around metadata. Uh, first of all, of course, um, the what well services related to the general catalog. I apologize. This is only in French, but <laughs> uh, but I will comment it for you. So the general catalog is the library's main catalog for all types of resources except archives and manuscripts. It holds more than 20 million records, both bibliographic and authority. Uh, and data from the general catalog is available in many forms and formats. So that's what basically this page is about, uh, giving you an overview of what different forms and formats you can retrieve the metadata in. Um, you can make your own selection or down download pre-selected sets uh, one of the, an example of those pre-selected sets is um, data from the National Bibliography. It can be all of it since 1970, or it can be only books, or only music, or only maps for a given period of time. But of course, it's not limited to National Bibliography records. Uh, data is retrievable through library protocols such as uh, Z 3950 and the newer OAI PMH. I don't know how long Z 3950 is going to survive, but for now it's still extant. Um, but you can also retrieve it as a CSV files, so tables, um, uh, spreadsheets, sorry, and use the API store where you can build your own uh, data sets using advanced searches and download the results in a range of formats. Okay, this, was in, this one is in English. Um, so the, the next um, service I want to highlight is data.bnf.fr. Uh, this is a service that extracts, transforms, and aggregates data from separate databases, the general catalog, but also archive and the, the archive and manuscripts catalog, and the digital library Gallica. Uh, so this data is produced in different databases in different formats and data data.bnf.fr extracts transform and aggregates it into a common database in order to link this data together and make it interoperable so it's a, it was created as a tool for linked data for the library as such it provides rdf dumps in several rdf syntaxes JSON, and it is searchable through a Sparkle endpoint. It aggregates only the best quality metadata from the three databases I mentioned, so it is not comprehensive. Depending on your research, you might want to also search those databases separately, but data.bnf.fr provides you with linked and enriched metadata, which is not necessarily the case in the separate uh, catalogs. It's the library's experimental tool for innovative technologies to make our catalog metadata richer and better interlinked, such as automated, automated links to work records and even uh, we've experimented with the automated creation of uh, some of those work records. Uh, with or without this research and development facet, linked data repositories for library metadata have become common online for most major libraries, both national and academic. Um, Well-known examples that I'm sure you're familiar with are Datos in Spain and the linked data service of the Deutsche National Bibliothek, but we also uh, saw uh, the other day uh, the one from the Polish National Library, for instance. So moving on from metadata per se, we come to the uh, Legal Deposit Observatory, which is the equivalent to what Elva uh, presented uh, for, for the Swedish National Library. So it's a repository of statistical data on publishers, printers, genres, carriers, languages and translations, of course, uh, etc., derived from legal deposit data and metadata. Through legal, the, the idea behind it when we created it about a dozen years ago, 
uh, was that through legal deposit, the BNF has a unique vantage point. So here the term, hence, hence the term observatory. Uh, and this statistical data complements that released by other governmental private sector operators on the nation's intellectual and cultural output. So this is limited to uh, national bibliography records because it's uh, legal deposit metadata plus data about uh, the legal deposit of websites, which websites are not catalogued, so it's not from, from records, but it's from the data about collecting them. So the repository itself okay, uh, is made of a set of spreadsheets with data, with raw data, which you can find here. And it's also, they are also available on the national data repository, data.gov.fr. But it's also uh, in the observatory also complemented with uh, text and infographics uh, with a focus on a different topic each year. So, or so it was until this year because um, it's very complicated and time consuming to produce these. And from the little statistics, new statistics we have, it's also almost never downloaded. So <laughs> a lot of work for something that hasn't found its public or has lost it around, along the way. <laughs> so we need to uh, rethink and we want to, um, we want to provide more raw data and let users do what they like with it, basically. So finally, uh, the BNF Data Lab, it was inaugurated just a year ago uh, as a tool, as a service for researchers who wish to uh, work on the digital collections of the BNF. Um, it offers tools, environments, support adapted to the different stages of digital projects uh, from the constitution of corpus through processing and analysis, evaluation, to preservation of data, etc. It is both a physical space, as you can see in the photo, uh, located in the research library, and a range of services that can be tailored to the specific requirements of a research project or team by working in close collaboration with the librarians and IT staff who have the most intimate knowledge of these collections. The first projects uh, currently revolve around mass processing of textual corpora, but projects on the library's metadata are very much within the scope of the data lab as well. So in conclusion, uh, I have to say I was invited to give a talk that was, how do we talk to librarians? That's what, that's what uh, Wojtek and Tomasz asked me. Uh, honestly, the past two days, if I had any, uh, if I was worried, uh, reassured me that you don't need my advice, because uh, fortunately, many projects involve researchers and libraries both. Um, but maybe a few, a few notes, a few do not forget. Um, national, many national libraries have linked data repositories online, and most of them are keen to hear about your research and needs, uh, as exemplified when I talk to you about the observatory. We try to meet those needs and sometimes, sometimes it doesn't find an audience or it loses it along the way. So it's really important uh, to, to keep in touch, uh, especially if the raw data is not enough for in your intended use. Um, in big libraries, in uh, libraries of a long history, the history of, a, of the catalog is a, a subject in per se, and it's much as we try to put uh, abstracts online to tell you, oh, if you do this, then you get that and so on. There's a point where I think the only solution is to actually talk to each other. Uh, and I know that's time consuming and we're not always as uh, you know, quick to respond as we would like to, but I think it's for the common good in the, in the end. Uh, of course, keep in mind that some library metadata may be available not through the library's own catalog of website, but through a government data portal or, or through international projects the library is part of, such as the, the European Library. Um, 
I would maybe just add that most obstacles you might encounter when you try to speak to librarians because you want data and they're not as responsive as you might like, uh, I think spring from the complexity of metadata and from technical and legal barriers, uh, be they real or, or perceived. Uh, and that's the important part, because if we keep the dialogue open, uh, leaning on the principles I outlined in the first part of my presentation, um, I think together we can uh, overcome those barriers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matilda, for your talk, especially for the nice and inspirative conclusion. <laughs> and I suppose there should be will be questions. Costa. Hi. Um, thank you very much for your talk. Um, I think your conclusions are yeah, very inspiring. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I heard a talk by the management of the library. One of the things she, she was the only one from the library in this, from the, from the people attending. But one of the things she also mentioned uh, is that when we publish something analyzing the metadata, we should also inform them yes. so they can understand better, you know, how we work, what are we looking at, and so on. Because she said, for example, we only this year we realized that there was this nice paper published three years ago, and you know, we just found out from all the ways of and perhaps it's another way of, of informing, you know, coming to the library. Um, one specific question, perhaps too specific. Um, we were trying recently uh, to retrieve information from authority, from authors, from the French National Library. So um, we had the IDs for authors, and we wanted to retrieve it through an URL. But what we found is that you don't only need the ID, but also the name of the person in the URL. So we, we guess that we were using the wrong uh, survey or we were using it uh, correctly. Um, you, yeah. I, so this is one of the times where I would love to be the, you know, perfect librarians who can just give you an answer like that. But I will have to uh, check with my colleagues. And if you would get in touch with me and show me the, the problem precisely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and also to, to your first part, your first point, um, yeah, this is something we're trying to do because I think libraries can also be, first of all, we're super happy to hear about uses, right, of course. But also we think we could uh, help highlight them. Um, we, we would like to be one of the places where researches meet. And I know with the new website for the um, French National Bibliography, that's one of the things we dreamt of when we were creating the new website that was opened uh, in 2020. And that's one of the things we haven't gotten around yet because of course it takes, it takes people. Like you can create a website and put it online and then it lives its life. But if you want to, you need someone behind the computer to get the researcher's email and be like, oh, that's interesting. May we put this on the website and hopefully we'll create a community and other people will you know, rebound from this research to something else and so on. But it's not a dream I've given up on. <laughs> <laughs> so I was really happy to uh, highlight that. Thank you. I have seen that. Uh, thank you for your final words. I very much appreciate it. We would like to uh, conversation with researchers. I have a question that, that uh, some years ago, a Norwegian uh, uh, researcher published a paper. He uh, uh, tried to analyze the, the Spanish, French, English, and German national bibliographies uh, uh, published as the open data. And it turned out that all these four uses different uh, data models. So the question, it, it, it happened six years or six or five years ago since the uh, first thing. Uh, have you worked together with other national libraries uh, 
in this topic. So I have a unified model kind of holding those. So I think my definitely my colleagues in in the metadata department have uh, like that's one of the other obstacles we have is we have big institutions and the people who create the data and the people who then make it available are not the same. So you add so many so many different levels, right? Uh, and I'm going to guess if it hasn't been done yet, it's because because of the way libraries work and because you take those projects, like making, making this data available uh, in that way, they come afterwards, right? They come to data that has been produced for decades, centuries sometimes. And there's always a technical problem somewhere that, oh yeah, but our data is so special, you know? So basically, I'm sure this won't work because blah, 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 or because we don't want to use this tool because the library has a policy of... So we, we really need to get, get our tools in order to be able to, to give a more uh, unified service. And there definitely is dialogue between the main national libraries you, you quoted, but I don't know how long it will take, okay. honestly. Thanks. Thank you, Celia. Is on the line? Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, I think we all like the, the, your last remark. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, this yeah. is what we're hoping for. And I was just wondering, I um, also from the National Library of Spain, I've seen that they do like tutorials and they publish, you know, like in programming historian a uh, tutorial of how to use the data, blah, blah, blah. I was just wondering if uh, is this something also that we can find in any of the pages to show, like, uh, you know, a guide of how to use the data or, or so. And the second would be related to what Jose said. Like, I don't know if there's a place where we can see how the data has been used in research, like a showcase of, oh, look, uh, this researcher did this and that and, and so on. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, so we have a couple of tutorials about uh, the catalog data, which should be available on the BNF's YouTube channel. Uh, that's probably the easiest way to find it. Uh, but it's also um, this page basically will give you that information. Okay. And from there, I think it's your starting point. Mm -hmm. uh, and to your... Remind me of your second question, please. It's like if you have a, a place where you can yes. see how the, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there are um, research blogs, basically, uh, that you can also find um, from here. If you go to the BNF website and the About Data Lab, I know there are links to the research notes, the research blogs uh, online, so yeah. Thank you. Question and any other questions in the audience? Comment or remark regarding the the researcher and the library connection, and so it's a kind of a it's a kind of a think paradoxical thing, right? Because on the one hand, libraries are usually under Ministry of Culture, so research is not the purpose there. The researchers uh, doing research on different data sets, so they are not connected to one specific for a longer period of time, although they might spend two years, three years on a week or a solution, then they just move on to another one. Mm -hmm. So kind of it's, uh, but it's been going on for such a long time, this problem, that it's actually finally time to find a solution to build like some hybrid Mm -hmm. institutions that really connect the research on a resource or treating the resource. Some resources are so key that you can't imagine that there won't be research on National Library of France or National Library in general. So it's definitely kind of, if we have an approach more resource-based research approach, mm -hmm. so then we get more reproducibility in SSAs, which is also the problem, you know, that we and maybe we don't have enough research or certain resources to find new potential ideas, to also reproduce the results. Mm -hmm. So this might be also in the next, I don't know, Horizon Europe or something that 
just to break those barriers that are kind of artificial, especially for SSH. So maybe that's that's something that we might kind of work together. Yeah, yeah, and. To that point, I would add that uh, many libraries have programs where researchers work in the like in the library with library staff and so on. So that's a first step, I yeah. think. And also a counterpoint, maybe that one of our difficulties is researchers are not only public when you're a national uh, library, uh, and we want to. It's really difficult to produce metadata that you know is what everyone wants like caters to everyone's <laughs> needs and in the end we tend to do something that's a bit more agnostic and leave everything to the users like basically we dump everything on you and good luck finding your way around it right <laughs> so and that's why we need that i think many interfaces interfaces be, between the people who catalog and who produce the metadata and the public's plural uh, of the library. So what you, what you suggested, find new ways, better ways to work together. Any other question? If it is not the case, thank you very much, Mathieu, for your talk.